pond is going to be fiberglass. Anyone seen this van before? Apparently this stuff absolutely stinks. Thank you, mother for the rabbits. Cheers. Cheers, that. Hello, splits. But it's everything we need. So Mrs. Whisperer is going to... I don't want that in my house. I'm going to try my best and... Even do the dabbing. <laughs> 21 thing about doing your own fiberglass in. They are. I don't take me out off at all. I'll take me out off to you. So, what we've done, we've cutting around the skimmer, most of these myself, and have a go at it. Uses some 50 mil screws. Credit where credit's due. Definitely not like filling in a wall, I know that much. Here, it's absolutely stinking, man. I can't even hold the camera near you, Matt, to be fair. <laughs> How's the smell now? You've got really got yeah, a load out. I can certainly feel this in my head. I know that much. <laughs> I need to get out. I don't, even, I don't even swear on my channel. The skill behind this. I'm getting in there and I'm having a go. Matt knows he said he's willing to let me have a go, even though his stress levels are probably going through the roof. <laughs> I can feel it straight away, like I've just done something I shouldn't have done. Comes quite easy without it. I personally think there's no video out there that can teach you how to do this stuff. Matt just going around the second drain. So that's half of the pond done. Even within a couple of hours, that temperature is not cooling down enough with the heat that we've got today. You can't be trying with this resin. More than happy, Matt, and I can't thank you enough, mate. And the job's not even finished yet. I don't believe how long I've waited for a fiberglass pond to actually have one now in my back garden. I am absolutely buzzing. Right then, so today's the day. The pond is going to be fiberglassed. Well, it's going to start to be fiberglassed anyway. So I'm just waiting for a, a man to turn up. I'll show you that man in a second. He's got a YouTube channel as well, so I'm sure you'll recognise this van. Anyone seen this van before? There's Matt. There he is. <laughs> there he is, Matt. Hello, Splits. There's Matt. <laughs> What do you reckon, Splints? Yeah. Chatting to the neighbours? I go, boy. <laughs> Tell you what, check this out for the van. There's Matt. He's here to do me the job. He don't know what he's letting himself in for yet. We're just going to unload the van. We're running a little bit of a book back at home. How many times you're going to say, thank you, mother, for the rabbits? I'll put one in there now. <laughs> thank you, mother, for the rabbits. It's all the gear. I don't know what it all is, but it's everything we need. So Mrs. Whisperer is going to take over from the phone and get a bit of video and go in. That's uh, James is carrying all the heavy stuff and I'll get the lighter stuff. <laughs> it in the Be careful now. <laughs> We've had worse things through this house. <laughs> But then, so I've called Matt in. He's got his own YouTube channel as well. GRP Lining Services. This is the only job out of all of the jobs that I've done, I didn't want to do myself. It's such a job that is so important. And there was only one person that I wanted to do this job. And from day one, before I even put a spade in the ground, I rang Matt up and I said, Matt, I said, I know you don't travel anymore. The distances for doing people's koi ponds. And he's had to do a hell of a journey today. Was it about four and a half hour trip today? 180 mile trip to get down to me so i could take me out off to him I spoke to matt and i said before i even put a spade in the ground i wanted to be 100 percent sure that he would come down and fiberglass the pond because i wasn't going to do this job without matt i wasn't even going to build the pond without matt I wanted him here to do a proper job on it just ran me through all the materials that we've just bought in so we've got all the the resin here and if i make any mistakes matt just correct me so we got the flow coat as well that's just the clear flow coat because we're waiting for the pigment to turn up that's due later on We've got the fiberglass, a full pack of foam now, plenty of buckets, because when this stuff starts going off, there's no point in trying to save your buckets, just get a new bucket. We still brought down his Makita fan. He knows I love some Makita fan. He's already said about me batteries. Keep an eye on me batteries. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's got his sander and all the bits and pieces that we need here. Glass was the finished glass, wasn't it? The surface, surface tissue. tissue. So um, yeah, to be fair, all of the safety equipment in here as well. So we're going to get set up. The first job we're going to do, crack on with the foam, I suppose, to start with, isn't it? Put all the foam on, which isn't so much as temperature dependent as working with the resin. And then we're going to, because I'm here, um, and I've kind of offered to help put the window in, the fiberglass, the window frame this evening, 
just a small mix of resin, not you know, not going to get involved with doing the whole pond because it's just not going to cool down enough to make a good start on it tonight. So, do the window frame and flow coat it, and that means at some time tomorrow we can get the grass in, and then we'll get out on the ladder on a bit of board rather than have the convenience of getting out and hopping out up here. One thing extra as well, Matt don't normally let people do this, but because I've done nearly everything myself here with this pond, he's going to let me have a go at having a, just to see what it's all about. And I want to have a little go myself. And normally it's a no-go. So he's got 100% confidence in me. And if I can't handle it, then I'm just going to let Matt take over. Apparently this stuff absolutely stinks. So I'm going to try my best. And I know with these temperatures that we got, it's another thing that you wouldn't normally even think about doing in th these sort of temperatures. So definitely. So uh, we're going to crack on. I'm going to show you what's happening. Right, just open that pack up. Right, so we're going to Those on the walls, hitting it all with resin. You're going to see a lot of this dust in. Pop. And this is the process of doing it. One, two, three, boom. Done. Right, everyone, yeah? Three good taps. Getting involved, see? Yeah, you'll be running the southwest division if you are beeline and service by the end of the month. You're living the dream, James. Living the dream, mate. Living the dream. I'll tell you what, this is a proper shock me how much comes off of these sheets. With fiberglass and keeping control of it all is a real a real key to working with it otherwise it can run away with you you end up with it in your hair and all over your clothes the stir that's in a resin up the lids on it that needs cutting off only when you stirred it up good tilt on it and turn it around and do it at a different angle that's him Open him up. This is part of the learning on how messy it can and might not be for you. So just pour it in, give it a good uh, good tilt, that's him. And then when you pull it back, do the same. Do it pretty quickly, yeah. Stop. Nice. You see what I mean about the dripping there, look? Yeah, definitely. So a spatula yeah. for the stirring of the hardener initially, yeah. Now the important thing with this one, do not get any of this in your eye. It will squeeze up the tube when you squeeze the bottom yeah it will go up that tube in the center and come back down into the dispenser 45 bang on yep pour it into pull that straight in yeah yep it's going to start you know the reaction starts from now yeah yeah you can feel it straight away <laughs> um you can tell the color difference has changed as well yeah when it's all consistent the same color that's mixed in you want six Good scoops of that. No mixing it. Don't get that. Don't let that touch the resin. Just dump it straight in. Because you are now. You are now because you put the hardener in. Go and get it in. You're against the clock. Is that on full speed? Just like that. Leave it. That's absolutely beautiful. That is. Don't and bad. When you've done the dot, when you've done the dot in, yeah. just pass it to me, yeah? Yeah. Or we'll, we'll just switch over. I'll do a bit, you do yeah. a bit, yeah? Yeah, but you technique. He's got technique, I haven't got technique. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, show you, I'll show you on the next one. We'll put this on. I'm oh. using it on the first one. In what the hell am I letting myself in for? It's not as easy as it looked, was it, love? <laughs> this is why, this is why you don't attempt to fiberglass your own pond. Because it ain't easy, I'll tell you that. Thing the tip pressure, palms here, and make sure you don't get the foam. Press it on, shuffle, but slide it up and down as well, and it spreads the paste out on the back, and that primary suction will grab it. See what you do, you're only pressing there, yeah? Shuffle it, James, shuffle. Shuffle, really shuffle it, right. <laughs> Amateur at work, see? 
I'll show you the shuffle technique in a second. I've got a good shuffle technique, but it's not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the technique. I'll follow on from there because we'll work into the inside, okay? Yeah. In fact, if you just leave, leave it an inch off the floor and then just shuffle its way down. And then just, just literally using all, all of the palms here and just shuffle it into place. That's him. Can you feel it? Yeah, I feel it fine. Feel, feel it a little bit better now. I want your hour to pressure in. Now. Don't, don't go too hard on the back. I'm tricky one. I'll just put the straights. I'll do the tricky one with the two pipes. Yeah. If you do this one with the one pipe. Yeah. Mark that surface on the back side before we dot and dab, yeah? Yeah. Matter of build through. And it's like a, a scissor reaction you know, to get coming. Yeah. And then you offer it back up to the wall to make sure it's going to fit. Okay. Thank you, man. Now I'll put it back up. Now she fits the beauty. Yeah. Now we've got them down on that side. Now what I do is you put a little mark up the top. You know that's the top. Yeah. Knife in the wall because you know where it is. And plenty extra around your pipe lock. Right. So there's no movement. Yeah. It might look like I'm rushing this, but I'm not. It's not a rush. It's doing it quickly. Yeah. Knowing how fast this is going to go off. Because it's 27 degrees now on in here. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Just going directly straight on there first, yeah? Yeah. And, that, and that, as I showed you, uh, you have palms and hands to really put that pressure on it. Like one, two, three, four. Right, well, I'm putting that one in. Yeah, paste that one up. And it's 1.63, yeah? 1.6, 1.53, so 100 mil, 50 mil each side. Go 50. Should be at 50 back over so I need to solve. Saying that you need a nice rounded edge for the fiberglass just to go right up over. Yeah, so you don't need to hardly any pressure. This is a job I'm confident in doing Matt. Saying to Matt a minute ago. I've seen a lot of Matt's videos. And it's proper shocked me that this job is definitely not easy. I, I'll take me out off to him. He makes it look so easy on their videos. Just doing that standard dot and dab. Blow my mind, really. <laughs> Absolutely blow my mind. I bought myself, I'll be able to have a good old go on this. And I mean, I ain't just saying this because Matt's here. I said to him off camera a minute ago, I am proper shocked of what this job actually entails. And the smell of that stuff is absolutely rancid. <laughs> One thing about doing your own fiberglass in, they are, I don't take me out off at all. I take me out off to you. Because there's no chance of doing it. I like that Makita tool as well. Matt better be careful with his tools before he comes up. <laughs> <over. laughs> <laughs> Right, I think we've had a good little session there, James. Yeah. Right then, so we're taking a little bit of a break at the moment. So what we've done, we've cut in around the skimmer, done all of the side walls. Everything's looking tickety-boom at the moment. Just cut some little four-inch fillets out for making the window frame. Did cut most of these myself and have a go at it. But one thing's for sure, cutting this material is completely different to what I'm used to. The cutting up meat, and it's a definitely a weird feeling changing cut into that stuff. But yeah, everything's looking wicked. We're just going to have a little break before we put the floor in. Everything a bit of a clean up. Got the old Karachi out. 
Glad this fan's here, because I'll tell you one thing. It is dead, dead hot. It's like I say, it's hotter than a snake's ass in a chicken shed, isn't it? <laughs> How do you think I'm getting on, Matt? Beautiful. Not bad for a, not bad for an amateur. Right, so Matt's just showing me how to actually make a sleeve to put your window in, a frame to put your window in. He trims it near the top, double thicknesses it up with a beveled 45 degree angle cut on the outside. Puts the paste on, offers it up into place, making sure everything's nice and square. Uses some 50 mil screws just to stop it from moving until it sets off. I'll give Matt credit where credit's due because I've been, you know, we've been in here now a good couple of hours and granted we've had a couple of breaks because it's so hot today. But I tell you what, this resin, well, this paste that he's using absolutely stinks, man. And it's gone to my head. <laughs> it has absolutely gone to my head. Feel all, you know, like when you're in a room and you paint and you've got no ventilation this stuff is 10 times worse than that yeah credit how matt can stick this out and he said this ain't even the start of it yet <laughs> this ain't even the start so i've managed to get back in the pond to groom and bear it for a little bit longer but we're just we're just scrimming off all of the um or we're just tidying up all of the little joints matt showed me a nice little technique using a scrap bit of foam matt's going around putting all the filler in i'm just tidying it all up there's so there is so little to do which is testament to how nicely the pond has been built in terms of trueness what is that definitely not like filling in a wall i know that much smash it in just bung it in. literally but the, the trick is to bung it in see amateur is no good at this type of thing Splinters in here open me now, look. That's it, beautiful. That'll do, isn't it? All systems go here now, Matt, innit? Yeah, right. How much hardener? I'm going to fiberglass those layers that you've cut all around the window. 15 minutes to do it at maximum, yeah? How much hardener do I need to put in there? To be fair, mate, I don't have a clue. That's why you're here. <laughs> this is where you can get tripped up. If you can't answer that question, if you don't know exactly how much to that put in, you shouldn't have touched this stuff. So Matt's just going up around the, uh, the window here. And then he's going to blitz the whole pond with one coat. This is a job that I didn't want to do around the window. I'm going to have a go tomorrow, but I'm not having a go tonight, to be fair. I want to make sure this bit's done. Well, the whole lot I want to make sure it's done right, but this bit here, most importantly, because if I mess this up, then, well, I ain't even taking that chance. Bit of Mr. Miyagi going on there, bit of wax on, wax off, isn't it? <laughs> Just going in round the window frame, which Matt kindly made, measured for us, got it exactly how we wanted it. Giving us a seven and a half mil overlap each side. Time the uh, thickness of the fiberglass goes on and sets. Be reckoned roughly around about five mil each side, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. Now Matt's just rolling it all out. Got to sure? be. You're going to have a go at any minute. I will be. So you can get a feeling for the sensation of it. I just said to Matt a minute ago, though, this smell now is ten times worse than what it was a minute ago been rolled out now now he's putting the tissue on which gives it the absolute perfect finish i think it does i'm hoping i'm saying these things right matt because i don't have a clue mate to be fair i've watched plenty of your videos yeah, yeah you can see him yeah let me get rid of that effect in a second just by putting that on just by putting the tissue on there and you do this with every job that you do i still wouldn't want to attempt it myself <laughs> I've got to stand back here, Matt. It's, it's killing me, this smell. Right, so I'm going to give it a go, 
as soon as Matt's finished doing the window, I'm going to jump in there and basically smash out the resin on all of the pond walls and the floor and all over and do as much as I possibly can and see if I can actually handle it. For the smell that I'm smelling back here, I don't know if I'll be able to and I don't know what it'll be like if we're having a beer in a minute, Matt, because I might go all giddy after the first point. <laughs> right up to the top, yeah, Matt? Yeah. And then keep dipping. Yeah. Don't be shy with it. Nice and thick. Yeah. And don't drag, don't drag any further than that point there. Right. More on the walls. That's it. That's the, that correct, that's the correct amount now. Slow down. Just slow and steady wins the race here. It's not like, right, it's going off. It is going off. It's going to set quickly. Yeah. But it's not like... It's going to set in. It's setting. not going to set on the wall or anything or and on the roller. Just roll it in here. Yeah, shift your bucket out of the way. Just give yourself a bit of clearance. Anything's possible. I might be the coy whisperer, but I can also mess things up. You got me to pick up the pieces. Don't be worried about that. But all you're doing basically is painting it out, and that's just the way to. Right up high. Yeah. Just up to that line again. Yeah. Don't stray onto it though, because you'll disrupt what I've got. Right, down. just there, yeah? Yeah. Not too much in one area. Spread it out. Spread it out a little bit, but if you're a bit dry, like that spot there. Can you go that way with it? Yeah, that spot there where we're pointing that's a bit dry, see? And that's a bit dry there. Yeah, got him. Nice and steady, you're going to be a bit quick. Just slow it down just a tad. Methodical, slow, you know, nice, steady, steady. How's the smell now? You've got really got yeah. a load out. I can certainly feel this in my head, I know that much. <laughs> How do you get right into the corner like that? Do we use a brush in a minute? No, try to push it in using the roller. That's it. But again, you're not, it's, you are painting it. Yeah. But you're not painting it like paint, if you know what I mean. You just get it on there. Just get it on there to the point where there's no drips in it. Once you've got a grip on it, that's it. <laughs> See? Certainly ain't like putting a bit of Dulux on, I know that much. You're doing all right so far. All of this? All the drips. Get all the drips out. That's it. I'm going to need to mix up some more resin. If it's anywhere dry on that wall, get it covered with resin. Can you see anywhere dry? See anywhere dry, man? <laughs> I can barely open my eyes. <laughs> Everything is... <laughs> this is one occasion where you can say, thank your mother for the rabbits. <laughs> the dry bit I was looking at to get rid of that's it. Right, I'm gonna send you out of here James. You've had yeah. a you've had a blinding go, yeah? I've had a go. <laughs> Shit me, I need to get out. I don't even I don't even swear on my channel. I need to go. <laughs> Whew. Is that alright? Yeah see it. <laughs> get out. Right Matt's gonna show me exactly how to do it because I had a good go but talk about Ed Rush stuff there is absolutely rancid man go straight to your head about to get out but matt's going to show me how to do it he's literally going to smash it on i think i was thinking that i was painting a wall or something like that but like a household wall like what you do with a bit of dulux he literally says you just smash it on i had a good go i didn't do too bad did i matt you've almost joined the dark side <laughs> Whatever you're putting some fiberglass on tomorrow, then you're then you are down the down the path of the dark side, and there's no coming back. Just rolling on the floor. Skill behind this to make sure you leave yourself a gap to make sure you can get out the pond. Right, so me and Matt's up nice and early this morning. We have to be up early to beat these temperatures because what we're dealing with today, unbelievable temperatures really. Six o'clock this morning, just to try to beat the temperatures, get as much done as possible before the hot temperatures come in. Early in the morning, Matt. Nice early, fresh start. <laughs> your fingertips over that surface there. And just describe what it feels like. It feels like a day after a shave. After, after you've had a shave, you wake up the next morning and you've just got that little bit on your side of your cheek. Remember when we 
just kiss the top of that foam just to put that slight round edge on. Yep. Just to throw with the fiberglass, just a tip, just a kiss. With your fingertips. Cool, that's completely gone. Virtually no effort. At all. Yeah, so definitely. Once the pond is fiberglass, it all goes hard to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it all gets that that kiss with the paper. The dust that it makes is all vacuumed out and swept out to minimise the contamination. Flow coat goes onto that surface and we get it as smooth. It's just a personal challenge to me to get it as smooth as we possibly can. Something like this is up for a long time. Insects live in here. And you know how strong that smell was yesterday. You were choking to death in there, weren't you? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I can still smell it this morning. Yeah. Um, the vapour is that strong and nasty. It will kill any insects that live up in spaces like this and they'll drop down. And you'll, the customer will have seen that I've sanded it down and been meticulous with it. Uh, and then... Oh, what's that? And you get you just get things like flies and insects, airborne contamination like this fly that I can see just here now. Mistakenly, that will do any damage to your fish because I know how important it is for nothing to be proud, which is why all the pipes go from that protrusion into the pond. With that all said and done, let's get some glass cut. I've worked out my working method to start part way along the window. Sweet. So just beyond halfway round, capture the floor, encapsulate this first bottom drain to get it across, isn't it? It is difficult, and that's one thing that I want to state a minute, Matt, to be fair, is that people that want to try this themselves, you really don't know what you're letting yourself in for because I I personally have seen a load of Matt's videos and you know fiberglass and videos, and I did not expect as, as strong a smell as what this was. I mean, it really made me feel all giddy after I got out yesterday doing that. And I mean, you actually had to get out. I had to get out. I've done a hell of a lot of graft to this. I've done everything, every bit of work to this pond I've done. And this has been, that was the worst thing ever. Went all red in the face, my eyes went all <laughs> swollen up. It wasn't very pleasant, I know that much. So anyone thinking of doing it yourself, and I'm not just saying it because Matt's here, and I'll tell you one thing for sure. That smell is rancid, absolutely rancid. He wound me up yesterday because I said to him, how long is it going to last for? He said, four months. I said, what? <laughs> the smell that is not uh, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slurp it right in there. Glass is going on. The glass is going on. Give me a good demonstration yesterday of what needs to be done. And I said to Matt this morning, I said, I'll be feel more comfortable with you doing the job, making sure it's done properly. Because I've had a go at it and my experience of that smell in the pond and I just want to make sure it's done right. I don't want to take the chance of doing it myself. I'm going to have a little go later on. I'm going to let Matt crack on here this morning. He's 10 times quicker than what it is if he was to sit here, video, explain to me what needs to be done. And it just makes sense, really, just to get the job done properly. And Matt can completely concentrate on what he needs to do. You mean you're leaving it all to me? Today? I'm leaving it all to you to do, mate. Yeah, I can't handle it. So Matt's just going around the pipe bits. This is a definitely a tricky bit to do. What we want ultimately, when you look down the wall, all finished or flow coated, is the smallest of little bumps of what remains of that pipe. It goes on with a second coat after it's been layered up. Around the skimmer now, bit of another technical job that needs to be done right. Another reason why I don't want to do it myself. Not really knowing how to do it. Hello, Matt, but this smell this morning, eight o'clock in the morning, is not pleasant. <laughs> so you're outside. I'm outside, yeah. I'm getting in there and I'm having a go. Not too fast either. Slow and steady wins the race. 
right there where it bubbled up with an air bubble like that, that's what I'm looking not to do. Absolutely. So just flat him out again. Okay. And carry on with the side, side, side view we're doing. Then we're going to have to crack on because I've got that new bucket of resin yeah. going off there. I appreciate Matt for letting me have a go. We don't normally let anyone get involved in this because it's such an important job. But as Matt knows, he said he's willing to let me have a go, even though his stress levels are probably going through the roof. <laughs> thinking, what the hell is this baboon doing? And if anything goes wrong, I've got you to blame now, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no guarantee on this one, no <laughs> oh, I'm, a, I'm here to pick up the pieces if anything goes wrong. He makes his videos, he makes it look easy, but one thing for sure, it's turning in. It's just experience, James, that's all it is. Because I've pushed a, well, you know, I've pushed a bit of resin in there without realising. Taking the roller off. Right. In the corner there, what do we do there? Do we pull it back this way? No, just leave it to me now. Because you're getting into the kind of technical aspects that, you know, I've got to Well be. out of my league. Exactly. Well out of my league. <laughs> you could have smell in there as well. It's, to be fair, it's it's not as bad as what it was with that hot, the heat we had yesterday, but getting down close to it, I can feel it straight away, <laughs> like I've just done something I shouldn't have done. So now it's time to put the tissue on. He's gone round and put two coats of fiberglass on. Now it's time to put the finished tissue on. This gives it a lovely clean finish. And it's something that Matt does on every job that he does. Tangle and watch how flat this wall starts getting. Tissue on round the, uh, round the pipes now. A little bit trickier to get this right. You can't be shy with this resin if you, you don't want anything anywhere that's dry. Fiberglass is pushed into there, same with the tissue, and then when it's all set and gone off, uh, we sand it all down, fill that you know, void with bonding paste, and then flow coat over it. We don't take the plastic up to this edge here, because we don't like the thought of the fiberglass coming away from the plastic and having water hammering down the back of your skimmer like that. completely done this side of the pond he's just rolling out the floor another thing Matt also does which has come with experience is that all of the sheets are cut to the exact size to get the overlaps on the drops on the corners to make sure everything is tied up perfectly and it means that he cut all of the sheets earlier on to the exact length that he needed to and it saves him messing around with cutting different lengths in different places with certain ponds that you can work that job out on. Bear in mind how warm it is. It is picking up in temperature now, yeah? Look at the size of that overlap in there, yeah? It's almost the width of the roller down here. Yeah. I'd rather give you more than try and put that layer up exactly so it's totally, you know, um, you don't see any overlaps. You, you can, you might be able to do it on certain jobs where there's no pressure on you. Started doing the bottom drain as well. When we talk about timing, what happens is when the resin contacts the glass, see it's quite stiff. Give that enough time in the drain, yeah? Just watch how you can manipulate it down into any shape, but this is just how we do a bottom drain. You know, put the glass on there and wet it and then try and hammer it down with the rollers and a, and a brush. And you let it, you let it, call it wetting out. The binder that holds the glass strands together, when that's kind of dissolved, for a better word, it's when you can start teasing it into place. We just go down, say, two, two and a half inches, something like that. Definitely interesting. I was surprised yesterday when you passed me that bucket and um, how hot the bucket was itself. Couldn't touch it, could you? Couldn't touch it. Too warm. Now Matt's putting the tissue on the floor. Give it that lovely finish. 
overlap the tissue on the ends and then he meets up that lap making it as even as possible laying it down so when you look down at the pond all of the gaps are pretty much identical and that looks mint we'll get this on before dinner and before that heat really comes to bite us because it was it was just insane yesterday wasn't it? a bit too hot like you said yesterday evening if it weren't me you wouldn't have even bothered attempting to start yesterday in that heat Smash that down because it's just going to crease up. Yeah. So just leave it for a second, find something else useful to do. Look out any resin drips, get rid of those. Keep it all nice and flat. Check what we've done so far, there's no drips. It's all looking, it's all looking nice and flat. Now that should be ready just to just to tap down into place, just tease it and then get this action. Again, you're not smashing it down, it's just a little dibble and a little dabble just to tease it into place and without squeezing all that resin out that you've put in there which makes it all waterproof. Which all of these little jobs are all made out to look so simple on camera but all about timings and getting things right and done at the right time is majorly important. So uh, anyone thinking of doing it yourself, I definitely do your own work and research as much as you possibly can. But I, I personally think there's no video out there that can teach you how to do this stuff. It's half of the pond done, looking absolutely mega. Well happy with that. Matt's just cleaning up his tools. Gonna have a quick cup of tea. I'm gonna go make us a nice bacon bat. We're certainly racing against the clock. Look at this sun come in now, look. Full sunlight. What's the time now, Matt? About half eight, nine o'clock? Nine o'clock and 19 degrees. Nine o'clock and 19 degrees. If we started now, we'd have been racing, racing against the clock to get it done. <laughs> so it's glad we got up early, even though I appreciate Matt getting up that time of day, because normally he wouldn't even get out of bed that time of day. <laughs> <laughs> Two eight o'clock in the same day. <laughs> I didn't realise that till I came down here. <laughs> and so we're just going to test the temperature in this bottom corner where uh, it's starting to set. Matt said a rough guess of 40. 38, Matt. You ain't Ooh. far off, look. 38. They'll say we rigged it. They'll <laughs> say we rigged it. Matt has given me the lowdown of why it's heating up there. Obviously, the insulation's holding the heat in. And as this resin's going off, I'm not sure of all the technical words of it. It's called an exothermic reaction, which means basically it gives off heat as it, uh, as it sets. Well, temperature is certainly climbing. Matt's flying here. He's uh, cracking right on with it. Just had a breakfast, nice bacon sandwich. Come back outside and, uh, well, Matt's almost finished the, all the side walls. <laughs> Going around the second drain. Splint's having a talk with the neighbours again. <laughs> and that is how it's done. Perfect, Matt, that. That impressed me, mate. I didn't know what to say in that pot. <laughs> <laughs> that is a perfect, perfect finish there, mate. Look at that drain. That drain is absolutely faultless. Right then, ladies and gents. So the pond is completely finished. We got no chance of putting that flow cart on yet. The temperatures you saw a minute ago, what we just tested that, we're at 58. Even within a couple of hours, that temperature is not cooling down enough with the heat that we've got today to put the flow coat on. But we're planning, we're gonna go up the farm this afternoon. I'm gonna show Matt around the farm. And if we can put the flow coat on tonight or this evening, we shall do that. We'll have a nice meal and we'll sink a few gallons. But that being said, we'll be back with you later on. But yeah, what an absolute cracking job. And I'll tell you what, I'll take me out off to Matt because there's no way I could spend that time in that pond. I had to get out. I couldn't handle it. It was just so hot. More than happy, Matt. And I can't thank you enough, mate. And the job's not even finished yet. Thank you, mother of the rabbits. Right then, Matt, everything that you've made me experience, Tell me what you think of this cider. Mate, you can, it's like the vapour, you can see it in the glass. <laughs> it's like whiskey, isn't it? <laughs>
Nice though. What do you reckon? That will catch you out. If you a two minute, one, one too many of them, and you, it would all catch up on you all of a sudden. You'd be in the right mess, I think. Thank you, mother for the rabbits. Cheers. Cheers, my dog. Wiggle. Hey? Your butt wiggle. <laughs> You're just standing down there with the edges, just until we've got the next little taste in. Matt's got the grind right. Masking up my skimmer, making sure everything stays nice and neat. He's got his paste mixed up, and he's going to do a tidy little job here. Look how thick that paste is. It's the fact that I've mixed it with no slump on it. So whereas we wanted the paste for the back of the foam, remember we did that shuffling motion? Yeah. To get it to spread a little on the back. This, we want it to hold up into that little void there. It'll only start going off once that reaction really starts to kick in, which is going to be 10 minutes away yet. I don't, to be honest, I've got a level with you. I don't normally mask these skimmers off because what's going to happen is the flow coat tomorrow morning is going to come up and slightly onto the skimmer face here. Yeah? And then what I've normally suggest to a customer is to, when they're bonding the window in, just smear some sealant around the uh, pipe returns, where the fiberglass finishes in the drain and the finishing point of the skimmer but meeting the flow coat at that point there all the way around we don't come up to this point here because we don't want the fiberglass releasing away from the plastic and having the water hammer down behind it uh, resin is not a glue and it's not an adhesive and what we're looking for is primarily the physical grab Giving it a nice clean up. Consistent, you know, whatever, whatever imperfections. I was, we were talking to James earlier about what's perfect. The blocks, in my opinion, on this pond, as they were like, earlier in the week on the job I worked on, were in my, my in my mind, they were perfect for what I'm doing. Yeah, but in reality, what is perfect? No car paint is absolutely perfect because perfect is in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? You know, what one man thinks is perfect isn't perfect to somebody else, is it? It'll be perfect for me, mate. Back out again, day three. Time to put the flow coat on. Up nice and early again. Temperature's already at 19 degrees. It's heading up to 30 today, so me and Matt's up here this morning, seven o'clock, and look at it. Look at the sun already. Absolutely crazy. Matt's just prepping up the flow coat. I let Matt do all of this. It's a finished product and I want it bang on. I don't want to be messing around and I don't want to be getting in Matt's way. Full concentration on what he's going to do and I'm just going to video it and show you how it looks. Mixing up the flow coat. Giving it a good stir up. This is when the pond starts coming to life. And I am buzzing about it. Matt's not buzzing so much. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Added in the hardener.
Rolling out the floor. Me like that, do the last bit. James, you gotta turn that camera off and dangle me in by my ankle so I can reach down to that last bit there. <laughs> the final square. Happy days. That is what you call the absolute hammer. Right then, Matt, is that time? Early in the morning. I cannot thank you enough, mate. You've done me an absolute cracking job. I'm so, so happy. I'm totally buzzing, mate. And um, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate, to have you down and have a bit of fun and uh, show me the ropes. But one thing's for sure, I'm glad you helped me because there was no way in hell that I would have took this job on on my own. So All right, then, you're happy. I'm more than happy, mate. I'm more than happy. And I'm going to say thank you very much, mate. Hell of a job. You're welcome. Hell of a job, mate. And uh, we'll stay in contact and obviously I'll keep hold of you on the phone and whatnot. And I'm going to go and show these viewers exactly the finished result of how happy I feel right now. I can get it as close as you like, mate. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Right, see you later, Splints. You're lucky you're going home because Mrs. Whisperer wanted to keep you. Right then, can you see the smile on my face? Words cannot explain how I'm feeling right now. You wouldn't believe how long I've waited for a fiberglass pond to actually have one now in my back garden. I am absolutely buzzing. I'm totally made up and uh, I can't, I can't thank Matt enough. But it's one of, I'm, I'm speak. there's not very often I ain't, I don't know what to say. I, I really don't know what to say. I'm totally blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. Look, let me spin in the camera around because I'm, I'm, mum, I'm mumbling myself up. I know there's a lot of people thinking, oh, it's fiberglass. But the finished result, what I've got here, is absolutely on point. And there is, it is faultless. It is what you call the absolute dream. So let me spin the camera around and show you how good this looks. And ladies and gents, cast your eyes around this. There is not one imperfection. There is not one bit of glass on the side of this pond. And if you want a flat surface, check this out every single wall is absolutely perfect i can't believe how good this has actually turned out the light's not doing us any favors because it's horrible to film at the moment sun's just coming in but i am absolutely buzzing this looks totally amazing i'm totally blown away and i can't thank matt enough absolutely bang on so yeah it's coming up to the end of the video guys it's been a mental three days to be fair making sure that this pond was done exactly how i wanted to do it obviously next job i've got to wait for this to dry i've got to get the window in i've got to seal around the bottom drains just with a little bit of silicone matt says it's not really needed but just for extra protection chuck it on there anyway seal around the pipe seal around the skimmer we will be in another video I'm not guaranteeing there's a video next week because I'm absolutely knackered. I recommend to people to have a go yourself if you're a DIYer. Well, I'll say one thing's for sure. With no experience whatsoever, if you're planning to do something like this, really do your own work. Don't just go ball for gun on it, especially if you want a finished product. When you put something like this in, you've got to live with it for the rest of your life. When it's in, it's in. There's nothing you can change. I'd recommend if you're trying to do something yourself and you're a DIYer, a bit like myself, I've tried, I've built everything with this pond and this thing was the, you know, the times with the temperatures, making sure everything's bang on right, how much you got to mix and all of the, all of the knowledge that you've got to know and the experience about dealing with different weather temperatures, not just the heat, the rain, sun, everything plays a massive part on fiberglass in. And would I recommend doing it yourself? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend doing it yourself. Get a professional that knows what they're doing. But if you want to have a go yourself, Feel free, have a go. But from my personal opinion on it, I wouldn't touch it. 
But if you do have a go, knock yourself up a little a box practice because it is crazy how fast and how quick this stuff can go off and how quick it can go lumpy on you. And knowing how much of the hardener to put in every day is different, every time of the day is different. And it's just something that I wouldn't want to play around with. But that being said, look, hope you really enjoyed the video. I've had a banging time here with Matt. I can't thank Matt enough for popping down. He drove 180 miles to come down to keep an eye on me to make sure things was happening. And uh, for anyone that says I've got it all for free, I haven't got it for free. I've paid Matt what he asked me to pay him. And uh, I didn't even question. I didn't even question it. I spoke to Matt and, uh, you know, Matt agreed to let me have a good go. Normally he doesn't let anybody have a go, but he knows what I'm like. He knows how proud I am to try to be, I, I'm trying to do all of this upon myself as much as I possibly can to show you guys that you can do it, but there's certain jobs. When I say that I can't do it like this on my own, there was no way I would get a finish like that on my own. And there's no way that I would attempt to do this on my own. But that being said, like I said, there might not be a video next week. I might take a little bit of break with the family and see how I get on, but I'll keep you all posted. I'll let you know what's going on. And uh, if you're not already, get hold of me on Instagram, get hold of me on Facebook. And I always do updates to let you know when videos are going to drop. But that being said, hope you have a banging week and I'll see you all on the next one. Thank you, mother with a fiberglass. <laughs>